Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to the Brownwood Lions Coach Show here on KOXE. I'm Derek Stuckley, along with Brownwood Lions Head Football Coach, Athletic Director Sammy Burnett. How are you, Coach? How was your weekend? The weekend was wonderful. How was yours? Pretty good, pretty good, Till the Cowboy game came on. and then Cowboys that... took a week off. They're <laughs> just rea- relaxing and going through the motions until yeah. they play Tampa Bay and maybe Tom thought... Brady, who's never lost to the Cowboys. Yeah, maybe they thought... Sunday was their bye week. I well, apparently. It looked like it. Yeah, I turned it off. Yeah. But it's probably, funny, I was texting Mark Baker, who's the athletic director at San Angelo, and he's going, then we them Eagles and all that. Mm-hmm. So, unlike me, I start, I put one of those laughing, smiley faces with the tears coming mm-hmm. out of his mouth. He's laughing so hard. And then a picture of the Cowboys, where I got it or how I learned how to do that, I don't know. Uh, but <clears throat> about halftime, he was talking smack to me. So, I was like, I surrender. Just tell them who won the last time they played. Yeah. There you go. Which what is, they need is you at more. You need to go to the playoff game. Because when you go to the games, they tend to score a lot of points. They yeah. tend to win. So make that happen. Well, I'll tell you what. I, you get to Tampa I, Bay tomorrow. You know what? I'm a, I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan. I was the one that picked the one win that they got against the Redskins way back when I was in college. And they went 1-15. And, and everyone was bashing them. And I've been to Dallas Cowboys support forever. But, man, I'm sort of concerned. After. Yeah, I mean they'll play great and then they play horrible. There's no in between really with them, so I don't know what's going on. I had my opinions, but I'll keep those to myself. Unlike most of our society that likes to spit it all out there, I won't bite my tongue. That's true. <laughs> That's true. That was well, my dad. That was my. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got another football game tonight. Still going with TC. Yeah, by two. By two. TC by two. Points, touchdowns, uh, two. dozen. Two. I'm not two. Getting, that's as clear as I'm getting. Okay. I don't know. I uh, yeah. I'm I'm still picking them. I think it could be their year. I'll be the devil's advocate. I'll take Georgia, and I'll bet you a stick of gum on it. Yeah. <laughs> I bet. That's how confident I bet I a am. quarter. All right. TCU by two, or Georgia wins number two back to back. There you go. Only the four school in the history to ever do accomplish that, right? Isn't it four schools have done that? I don't think this so. would be four. Is this is there three? Uh, I don't know. I'll take it. Real Alabama. Mm-hmm. Cl- nope, not Clemson. Someone else. Maybe it's the third school to win back to back. Go back to back championships. Know. Somebody did yeah. it back in '69 and '70. I'm not going to mention any names. Longhorns. Yeah, but they won't, be, they, yeah. Won't, they won't be playing in it anytime soon. But way back when, they, way back. they were good way back. When. <laughs> All right. Speaking of football. Brownwood Lions have an event next Monday night. Yeah, our football sports banquet is going to be at uh, Coggin, Ebony Baptist Church again uh, this year. It's at 630. Uh, you can contact the Lions Mothers Club if you'd like a ticket uh, to go to that. Remember, we let our athletes in for free, and then, of course, parents and guests pay for those tickets. Uh, you can get those again from the Lions Mothers Club, and that's Monday the 16th at 630 at Coggin Avenue Baptist Church football banquet, which I'm excited about. I mean, I've been to, for 30 years, I've been to a lot of banquets, and there's some that are major formal and some that aren't so formal, and I sort of, we're sort of in between where it's a casual, business casual, and I really like the way it's done. I like, of course, the Mothers Club does a phenomenal job of decorating and uh, they got a great, uh, Coors does a great uh, video for the boys. I mean, it's really top-notch, great food, uh, usually served by Howard Payne, who they've catered in the past, so hopefully that will be done again. And, uh, I mean, it's just a real relaxed evening. We get to celebrate the kids and the season and the year they've had at all levels, freshman through varsity, and it's really an enjoyable time, fun time for me. I really like it. It's more of a laid-back uh, not so laid back, but laid back. You know, it's right there in the middle, business casual, and I really, really like the way it's done, and I enjoy it every year. I used to dread them. I used to dread them a lot, but I really enjoy it and have a good time with it. Lots to celebrate this yes, year, Yes, sure too. is. Sure is. you gotta, you got to celebrate the highs, don't you? That's right. That's, That's right. what we're going to do. Well, let's talk about some other sports. Let's kind of review the weekend. We had basketball and soccer in action, mm-hmm. so let everybody know how things went. <clears throat> to recap, uh, girls dropped their match against uh, Glen Rose. Um, I thought that, you know, I, I talking to several, I think as, I talked to you as well after the game, and uh, our girls played hard. They fought mm-hmm. hard. They, taught, they fought a worthy opponent with a 6'2 and 6'5 young lady sitting in the middle when you threw the ball on the block, down on the block. They were going to uh, make put points on the board, you know, and they did. Uh, they're ranked number one in the, in the state for a reason. 
Uh, they're a good basketball team, and our girls never stop fighting. I love to see the heart that they have and all that kind of stuff. Didn't get in the win column, but uh, there's a lot to be learned and gained. And, and I, I think about everybody I talked to said, you know what, they were up against a worthy opponent, but, man, they sure fought and they never gave up, and that's a testament to them and their character. So congratulations to them. Uh, the boys dropped their match against Gatesville, 67-84. Uh, to 84. I talked to a couple of kids. Wanted to know sort of their perspective. Uh, they said they thought they came uh, together better as a team then through the course of that game uh, than they probably have all year, which is important, especially when that's coming from the kids. Uh, Tristan Salinas, I thought, thanks, shot in the 30s uh, and had a couple other guards that, that were performing. So he thought, you know, from talking to a couple of, of the players themselves instead of always going to the coach, they thought that they gelled a little better and uh, came together as a team. That's huge. So we'll see how that develops as the week goes along. Uh, and then uh, on the boys and girls soccer side, uh, the girls play for the championship. Uh, they beat, let's see if I can go back, they beat uh, Saginaw 3 to nothing. They beat Waco University 2 to nothing, and dropped a close match against Wimberley in the championship. So they finished the, the tournament 2-1 and one in second place. And that one, the boys uh, went 0-3, losing games to Irvin 2-1, Marble Falls 3-2, and Taylor 2-1. So every uh, contest they, they played in was a one-goal difference. Uh, Got to find a way to get over the hump. And was, I was told a long time ago uh, as a head coach, you can preach, you can preach, you can preach, but until those kids find a way to get over that hump and win that big game, they won't understand what you're telling them. So hopefully uh, they're right there on the cusp of getting you know some wins. So hopefully they'll they'll stay in one of those close games, find a way to score, find a way to get ahead, uh, and then find out uh, what it how, what it takes to win those games, and then start getting on a run. But uh, pleased with with the way that they're performing, who they played, uh, and, and how they're they're staying in games. So I think there's a lot of good things to to see from what's going on on the girls and boys soccer side. I uh, got to see the boys play the other night at home, and I thought they played a great game, a lot of energy. So I look forward to seeing the growth that they have. Uh, for the rest of the week, on Tuesday, we have girls at Mineral Wells. That's their second district game. They start at 4.30 and then 5.45. Our boys will be at Jayton at, starting at 4 o'clock. That's a non-district game. Girls soccer uh, versus Marble Falls at 4.30 and 6 at Gordon Stadium. And the boys will follow. Uh, they got a tough match against the strong Abilene Cooper team at 7.30. So boys and girls soccer at Gordon Stadium on Tuesday. And then we're back to tournaments uh, for our soccer team later in the week, and then basketball uh, boys and girls will combine and start playing their schedule together as they, they'll take on Graham. That's a busy Tuesday. Busy Tuesday. Oh, sorry, forgot. We have tennis as yeah. well te uh, on the 10th. They kick off their season at uh, Copper's Cove. I uh, talked to Coach Blazik, I guess, Friday. Uh, she's excited about that. We just sat out there in the sun and talked a little bit about what's going on and watched the kids a little bit. So, yeah, they tip off our whatever how do you ever start a match they they serve, serve it up on the 10th against coppers Cove. always a good match for them yeah yeah let's see girls and boys soccer both here tomorrow night so mm -hmm. a chance to go see bo both and, teams. yeah both teams there are gonna be three soccer games so it's gonna be girls jb varsity and then boys varsity um kind of on the boys soccer note at the tournament all you mentioned all three losses by were one game mm -hmm. you know they've been in that georgetown tournament before and hadn't been pretty yeah yeah so Definitely looks like they're heading in the right direction. Of course, the girls are, are three and one now, so mm -hmm. so both programs definitely seem to be in the right going in the right. Yeah, direction. I mean, you look at who they're playing, and they're not slouches or good soccer programs. The girls uh, were victorious in two of their three games, lost a close one uh, to Wimberley, from what I understand. And then, I, of course, I wasn't there. And then on the boys' side, talking to Coach Westerman, I really pleased with what's going on. Just got to find a ways to keep them out of the goal. Or to get one more one or two more in the goal, but uh, being in every ball game is a lot different than it's been in the past. So seeing a lot of growth and, and excited to watch them. I mean, they're exciting to watch. I mean, they get out there, they play as a team, they play hard, and uh, you know, hopefully, eventually those wins will start falling into place for them. Yeah. Um, going back to the girls basketball game Friday night, I thought one of the highlights was the opening tip. I don't know if you saw it or not. <laughs> when, when Hannah Dean. Out jumped the yeah. big six the five. The expression group. on her face. Hers like a, and the rest of the crowd yeah. went crazy. That uh, was our first victory right there. And then like we a, hit a three pointer, and then yeah. uh, they sort of. But she looked like a five year old girl on Christmas yeah. morning. Santa Claus just came. Just that expression was, was something else. Yeah, that was good stuff. And, out, and of course, a big game for them against Mineral Wells. Uh, of course, 
Glen Rose and Stephenville, both state ranked, so it's probably going to be us, Mineral Wells, and Graham probably fighting for those other two spots. So. Right. You know, and, and uh, Stephenville's been growing. They got a good point guard that moved in for them, I think, last year. They got, uh, I think, the daughters – of uh, a couple of the coaches at Tarleton that are there that have been very, very beneficial, good move-ins for them. Uh, Going to be strong, but you know what? Just get out there and do what you do. We got to hit, about shoot. And you know, the MO for us is the same. We talked about it. We miss too many shots from the perimeter. When we have opportunities after rebounds to put the ball back in the bucket, we're not able to, able to do that, uh, missing some layups and just some things like that that it's not on anybody except the fact we got to go out there and execute. And the difference in winning and losing is execution. It doesn't matter what sport you're playing. It doesn't matter if it's a team sport or individual sport. Uh, I sat there and watched a golf tournament yesterday, and Colin Morikawa, who is probably one of the best ball strikers in the game, had a nine-stroke lead and lost. You know, so it doesn't I can ma- do that. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't matter uh, who you are at what level, male, female. It doesn't matter. The bottom line is whatever you're doing, whatever game or sport it is, you got to execute. And uh, at boys, girls, doesn't matter. We got to go out there and shoot well, uh, make shots. You got to rebound well. You got to put up well, and you got to make layups and things like that. If you do that, you stay in ball games, have a chance to win. You don't, you're gonna get beat. Yeah. And for the boys, it's their last tune-up before district chance mm-hmm. to get some things worked out. Yeah, very much so. You know, they need some confidence. Uh, I don't know anything about Jayton, uh, but I know they need some confidence going into district. Uh, they need to continue to gel uh, as a team, as a lineup. Uh, coaches got to know who's going to go in there and who's going to start for them, who's going to be their bench players, what everybody's role is. And, you know, Coach Park will do the best he can to do that. And those boys got to rise up and go out there and compete and battle. And, and same thing, they got to execute and find a way to get in the win column, period. Yeah. Um, of course, this is Brown County Youth Fair Week. Mm-hmm. Just kind of talk about how that kind of balances between athletics and how the kids attempt to do both during this. Yeah, week. we make it work. I mean, that's the bottom line. Uh, whether you practice early in the morning to give them a chance to get up there and to do their thing or to uh, – they're just – uh, there's possible sometimes like with us that they're just exempt. I mean, they're going to do something we believe in multi-sports. I think showing animals and all that uh, builds great character, uh, great work ethic, responsibility, uh, and that's part of what we do. We consider that a sport. Uh, And our kids are gone to do that, and they're gone a lot of time. I mean, a lot of those kids show not only pigs, but sheep and steers and heifers and whatever that may be. Uh, They just do what they need to do, uh, keep them right in the classroom, uh, do what they got to do to be on the court and to be, you know, in the barns at the same time. But uh, there's no fussing or whatever. We make that work. We want our kids to be active. And we have a lot of kids, may I say, I uh, didn't mention the, the youth fair, but the youth fair is a big deal. We have a lot of athletes involved in the youth fair, and I love going to watch them. Any time when it's going on that week and I can get out of the office and run over there and watch our kids, I do so because it's neat to see them in a different world other than my world. And uh, I'm shocked every year when I go out there and see someone that I didn't know did that and uh, that showed an animal. But, man, I, I think there's so much to learn. Uh, from showing animals to be responsible. It's like having your own child but not being a human being and being an animal. Mm-hmm. And what a great opportunity to teach responsibility and care and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and to see those kids go out there and master that craft. I have a young one myself that's involved mm-hmm. in that, and I really enjoy watching her do it because uh, she's learned and developed some skills a lot on her own, you know, because I never raised a sheep or, or showed a sheep. I was a horses and a and and pig guy and uh to watch her do that and for her to teach me some things is pretty neat so i really enjoy the youth fair and what it has to offer yeah fun week all the way around no sports doubt. youth fair busy week but that's how we like it yeah, yeah. always <laughs> all right anything else you want to add today coach yeah let's thank those that make this show possible auto glass magic Bruner auto group syntex body and paint syntex equipment sales citizens national bank Dan Hill Containers, and may I say congratulations to Brandy and Bon Young. Uh, Dr. Young, sponsored, had their first grandbaby this weekend. What a blessing. Right. Uh, so congratulations to them. They're going to call him Chief, so that's Grand Chief, <laughs> Dr. Bon Young. Dr. Dr. Pepper Bollin Company, Edwin Jones Investments, Henrik Medical, Harry Enterprises, Humphrey Peets, Heartland Funeral Home, Landmark Life, MC Bank, Painter Johnson Associates, Smith & Sharp Agency, Sonic Drive-In, Stanley Chrysler, Texas Bank, Weldon Wilson Electric Western Bank and Willie Steves. All right, we will be back. Uh oh, do your count. Bam! Forty-one days. 
41 days. I was watching a little football, and they said, be ready for the clash in the Coliseum. So I'm sort of ready for that. That's in the uh, 5th of February. Yeah, 41 days. We're Star, we don't in. have countdown like this for two days. We That's need, right. We need to do this in the summer now. Everybody knows. 41 days until Daytona. Daytona. Yeah. All right. I'd go. <laughs> I'd go if I had tickets. All right. Well, we will be back <laughs> Wednesday <laughs> to recap a busy Tuesday here on the Brown Wood Lions Coach Show on KOXE, KOXE.com, the KOXE app, and the KOXE Facebook pages. Have a great day, Brownwood. <laughs>